Now we're going to meet the two candidates seeking election to the district judge position for the 319th District Court, Michelle Villarreal Kuchta and David Smith. Stiff. I'm sorry, I know that. <laughs> Mr. David Stiff. Thank you. Uh, we will begin with you, Mr. Stith, and your two-minute opening remarks, and forgive me. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Um, good evening. My name is David Stith. I'm the judge of the 319th District Court. Um, prior to becoming judge, I worked in the County Court of Law as the judge of the County Court of Law number three. I've been a prosecutor, um, attorney, and I was previously uh, elected president of the bar uh, before taking office. Um, instead of going too much into my background, I want to instead talk about an issue that, that is very current, very recent in the courts and what we are doing in the 319th to deal with it. Family violence, as you know, has been an issue for a long time. And here recently in the news, we've heard many stories where that family violence has gone to the extreme where there's been murders and suicides, one of the, one of the last cases that have come up. So there was a law that was passed in 2009 called Mary's Law, which was really not utilized in Nueces County. Mary's law allows not only for a GPS tracker to be put on an individual accused of family law of violence crime while he's awaiting trial on bond, but also a key part of it is that there would be victim notification. That had never been done. So when the technology came out, we in the 319th were the first ones to adopt it. I'm extremely proud to say that today was the first day that we put somebody not only on GPS, but also started victim notification. And, and that is... It's so important because if you're a victim, you want to have that extra time to know if somebody's coming after you, if the defendant is trying to reoffend. So, uh, so um, we're going to start doing that in all of the cases where a person is charged with family violence, and that's very, very exciting um, in court. Uh, I'll tell you, I'm going to uh, reserve for the rest of the time, but if you want to come talk more, I'll be here, or if you want to come visit me in the 319th, I'd love to talk more. Thank you. Ms. Villarreal Kuchta. Hi, I'm Michelle Villarreal Kuchta. I'm running for the 319 District Court. Born and raised here in Corpus Christi. I'm very familiar with this community. I too would like to address that. Mary's Law was implemented back in 2009. The option to order a monitor has always been in place. I know that my opponent is addressing the askew matter. It was a suicide uh, death uh, or a death, homicide suicide uh, that just happened here recently. That option has always been made available. Also, it started off with a magistrate's order. At that time, someone with my experience, both in criminal law and family law, understands that you can always go forward as a judge and modify any order. So that implementation is a little too late. That's great that it's going on right now, but that was something that was available back in 2009. So this case, out of the 319 District Court, it was a divorce. There was also a protective order. And in those events, this tool could have been utilized and possibly prevented the horrible death that occurred. So yes, I, I do praise the implementation. I think it should have been done a long time ago. And I think that's where experience counts. My experience in handling family law cases and the dynamics that uh, are entrenched in them, and my experience uh, also for an equal amount of 18 plus years in criminal law would have told me the necessity is there. You make that decision. You go off the beaten path you order what needs to be done to protect your community. And everything was in there, all the elements, all the facts that, that basically told you what needed to be done and protection for this family. So the tools were always there. The, I have the experience in both family law and criminal defense law to know that those should have been used. Thank you. Thank you. The first question is for Judge Stiff. On your signs, you say you are a community judge. Define what you mean by a community judge. Sure, that'd be great. First off, as a judge, you don't just serve Democrats or Republicans, you serve the community. I truly believe that if you are going to be a public servant, your first duty should, or your first requirement should be that you care, that you care about your community and you wanna bring change. Um, so all, since I started, um, the goal 
of becoming a judge. I started serving in the Bar Association, bringing Spanish for lawyers, uh, bringing Wi-Fi to the courthouse, serving as bar president, um, and then up into becoming judge and bringing in these new programs. I would like to address real quick, um, in fact, Mary's Law deals with criminal cases. The Askew case was a civil case. We are waiting on an attorney general's opinion to see if we can bring it over to, to, uh, to civil cases, but you, I guess experience needs to be uh, gained a little bit more there. Thank you. The next question is for both of you, and we'll start with Ms. Villarreal Kuchta. What will you do for victims of domestic violence? Um, exactly uh, what I had just addressed uh, earlier. I will be paying attention to the details and the facts that are presented to me. I will acknowledge that there is a problem when the facts show that, and I will address each case on a case-by-case -case basis. I will hear from the respective attorneys. I will hear from the respective witnesses. I will get anybody involved that is necessary, whether it is police or law enforcement, if it is uh, if we are needing any kind of help from the probation department, tracking devices and whatnot, if there needs to be intervention, if there needs to be counseling on either side, also I will order those uh, to be done. So I will be addressing all the issues and taking uh, to heart every problem that might exist or any apparent problems within that case. Thank you. Thank you. Judge Stith. All right, thank you. In, in addition to the victim notification, which um, even though my opponent believes the technology was around, this is a new technology. I just uh, actually met with probation department as well as the third party that we're using to install those devices, and it's really new. So the fact is we're still establishing the ground rules. Even today I met with, uh, um, with probation and the company to make sure that we establish the right guidelines for their use. So uh, in addition to victim notification, you certainly need to have um, defendants placed on pretrial conditions that are appropriate to protect the victim. Um, even though we are currently using GPS, that additional victim notification needs to be a part of all of the bond conditions. Thank you. The next question is for both of you, and uh, we'll start with you again, Judge Stith. Right, How can we reform jury processing? All right, jury processing, and the way that we currently do uh, jury processing needs to change. Um, we're currently having a, what, what can only be called is really a cattle call, where we have a whole bunch of people summoned. They, come, they show up on Monday morning, and then a lot of times, people are waiting around for hours and hours and hours before they get assigned to a court and go up and start the board hour process. In my court, we've changed that. I now uh, select jurors on Tuesdays. The reason for that is that that panel is, is formulated that much quicker. So now, if you're assigned to the 319th District Court on Tuesday, you come up to the courtroom at about 845. We're done with board hour by lunch. The 12 people that are selected for trial go forward, and the rest of the panel, 50, 48 of them, go home. So I've saved an immense amount of time. For those of you who know who have gone through jury duty in the past, know you used to be there till 4 or 5 o'clock in the afternoon, and you don't do that in the 319th District Court. Thank you. Ms. Villarreal, Kuchta? Uh, having the experience uh, in, as a trial lawyer, I've, over, I've tried uh, over 800 proceedings. I've tried over 200 jury trials, and that includes family law and criminal cases. But what you're referring to is the problem that we have with the overcrowding and the delay. Now, I think we could address that um, one by instilling and making sure that attorneys, both prosecutors and defense lawyers, hold themselves to time commitments uh, and make sure that their announcements of ready for trial or not ready for trial are known soon enough. We need to uh, accommodate witnesses, put law officers that are testifying, and I think that's what we need to do. Also, uh, I do know that this has been a problem for many years, and uh, even for the past three years, there's been an ongoing, um, I guess, attempt to, to fix this. There, there needs to be more work done, and I do plan to do my part. In addition, okay. thank you. Yes, your time is up. Uh, the next question is also for both of you, and we'll start with Ms. Villarreal Kuchta this time. The question is, what is your judicial philosophy? I believe that a court belongs to the people, to the community. I believe uh, that the courtroom is a place for you to find resolution and finality. 
I believe that you should be treated with respect. Um, and not only should you be treated with respect when you come in, I think as a judge, if I am so honored to be your judge, I will expect the parties to respect each other and practice civility towards each other. I believe that a court is a place for, as I said, resolution. And I will do everything in my power to get the resolutions that you need in a prompt manner, issue prompt rulings. I will also uh, require attorneys to stick to their commitments of time. If they say we need one hour, we need two hours, I will ask and try to enforce that. Of course, uh, not at the expense of them not having a full trial or full hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Judge Stiff. Hi, thank you. Uh, my judicial philosophy is that courts need to be open. Uh, they need to be easily accessible by the public. All too often, uh, the people we elect, whether they be judges or other elected officials, put themselves on a pedestal above their citizens, and that's not the case. When you take on the mantle of a public servant, you really should be there because you want to serve the public. And so I, I have made the 319th District Court very open and accessible. Whether or not you come into court on a divorce and you're represented by an attorney or you're representing yourself, you get treated the same. You get treated fairly, and that's so important. All too often, um, all too often in, in our courts, um, those people that are unrepresented or those people maybe that come from a different socioeconomic background are treated differently than others. And that's, and that's just not right. Courts are, are courts that need to treat everyone fairly and equally and with respect, and that's what we do in the 319th District Court. Thank you. This will be the last um, question and uh, for both of you, and we'll start with you, Mr. Stiff. How are you the best candidate to uphold the legacy of Tom Greenwell? That's a great question. Tom, Tom Judge Greenwell um, was truly an inspiration. He was extremely humble, as many people know. Uh, he treated every person that came into court with respect and as a friend. And it's, uh, it, it was really bittersweet when I heard of his passing, and, and obviously um, I was the one who was um, appointed to take over for him. And it, it, was, it was very hard. Um, the staff, I know, has been very difficult. Luckily, they've agreed to stay with me throughout the process. Um, but Judge Greenwell always, if you had been in his court, always took the time to listen to every person. And he had such patience for anyone coming in there. And uh, I'll tell you, I got... I got some opportunities to talk with Judge Greenwell at his house while um, he and I were running, and he was just such a humble man. And that is the one part of his legacy that I hope to continue, is to not see yourself as, as somebody above um, just merely because you become elected or you become a judge, but you need to be a servant and be humble. And so I, I truly believe that's his legacy and something I want to continue. Ms. Villarreal, could you start? Can you repeat the question, please? Yes. How are you the best candidate to uphold the legacy of Tom Greenwell? I feel I'm the best candidate to uphold his, uh, his legacy because I am familiar with this community. I am familiar with the bar. I am familiar with every component uh, that makes up the legal field. I, I too had the opportunity and I am grateful uh, just days before, not even a week, uh, his passing uh, to visit with him. And I am very grateful also for an opportunity. He allowed me to visit with him on an issue that I had. He was on vacation. So I think the fact that I was able to reach out to him while he was on vacation speaks a lot about him. But it goes more also to the fact that he made me, as an attorney, feel comfortable even approaching him outside of the courthouse. I expect to be that very same person. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now I have a one minute closing statement and we'll begin with uh, Ms. Villarreal Kuchta. 
As I told you, I'm Michelle Villarreal Cookta. I feel I am the best qualified candidate for this position, and I can say that because of my 18 plus experience as a family law lawyer and a criminal defense lawyer. I've had a solo practice that also I've handled other types of cases, but my component uh, caseload has been in those areas which make up a core caseload in that court. I do want to say in finality that uh, while that technology of victim notification is coming uh, about at this time, the tool of having tracking devices has been in place for a very long time, for many years. The fact that technology evolves, it evolves every day, every minute. How, and it's just a matter of what you do with the technology you have. We had tools in place way before today. So it's just a matter of how you use your common sense, how you use your, how you make your decisions based on what you have. Thank you. Judge Thip. And just quickly, yes, we did have tracking devices, and those have been used in the past. What we didn't have is the victim notification requirement, we, which we are now implementing. Um, I want to say thank you for, for giving your attention tonight and coming here. I know it's not always um, fun and easy to take time out of your day to, uh, to come listen to candidates, but I think it's so important. Um, and I also want to say thank you uh, to giving the opportunity to serve in the 319th District Court. It's, it's such an important thing, I, and I truly believe that we need people not only as judges, but also in other elected offices that care and have a willingness and a desire to serve. Um, so I invite you to please come down to the 319th District Court. We're on the eighth floor. The 319th District Court it covers all of Nueces County. We handle criminal, um, civil, and family law cases. And all of those issues are so incredibly important. So I would welcome you to come in. If you think uh, I'm doing a great job, I'd like to hear it. If you think I'm doing a bad job, please come tell me as well. And I would love to hear about that and make changes if I need to. So thank you very much. Thank you both for participating tonight.